Hello and welcome everybody. Liam Murphy here back to talk about the combine, the NFL combine, find some winners from the combine. And of course, rip a draft on underdog fantasy, ripping a big board here. If you do not know me, I'm a three time NFL best ball champion. Please do your part and subscribe to the channel and like the video. If you like, you can become a YouTube member as well for access to the premium Discord. That Discord is linked below in the YouTube description. So, we're through the combine. And I want to just dive in. We'll, we'll take a look at an article or two, see what people have to say. Um, we're going to start with the 40 times of the wide receivers. And we don't really care about the 40-yard dash itself. We do, though, care a little bit about the 10-yard split. Now, the NFL website is terrible. When I try to open these, I just get added to death. So what we're going to do is we have Twitter open here. And if you just type in a player's name and RAS or RAS, that stands for Raw Athletic Score. And our guy, Kent Lee Platt, at MathBomb on Twitter has uh, cards for all these players. And he has the U, I mean, it's unofficial. Um, but whatever, we're just going to deal with his latest tweet and go from there. So, obviously, Xavier Worthy ran a 4-2-2 unofficial. I think maybe a 4-2-1 official 40-yard dash, which is, I believe, a combine record. So, absolutely bla blazing speed. Um, but again, we care more about the 10 yard split and what's noteworthy is I think some players matched him in 10 yard split time, but just, you know, they're slower over 40 yard dashes. And, you know, to state the obvious, why do we care about the 10 yard split more than the 40 yard dash? Well, it's more an indication of how explosive you are. Very rarely do you get to run a 40 yard route in the NFL. Um, a 10 yard split though, you know, that's how basically how quick can you get up to speed? So, um, is it raw or relative? I think it's relative. My, my mistake. Yeah. And, and why is it relative? Well, he has a huge, uh, database of players. It says right here, relative. Um, he has a huge database so he can, he can compare the numbers. You have the overall numbers here, right? And so he, overall Xavier is a nine, three, seven. And then he has it broken it down into speed grades. He has it broken down into explosion grades and size grades. And um, different positions, we care more or less about how their RAS profile is. For example, tight end. Almost never will you find a productive tight end in the NFL below like uh, six and change at least, at least a seven. And generally, the better you are there, the better your score. So Xavier, we're going to go with one five, 10 yard split. Let's look at Brian Thomas Jr. Also a guy who gets buzz. Um, and I guess I'll just open up new Twitters just so we can go back and compare it in case. We're just going to look at the top five, I guess. Brian Thomas Jr. Raz. So we're getting a one five, three, 10 yard on Brian Thomas. Now, What's noteworthy is compared to Xavier here, he weighs 30 more pounds than him, you know? So a 153, 10 yard, 434. I mean, this dude is just a freak. Now, we've seen quite a bit of players come in like this. Um, Marvin Mims comes to mind. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name right now, but the guy on the Panthers who. Is really athletic, who Terrace Marshall Jr. comes to mind. So I think that gives people pause on a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. Why uh, did some of those guys flame out? Well, being athletic is not, you know, it's not the end all be all of playing wide receiver. Three cone, uh, it seems like a lot of players no longer do the agility testing. And my guess is because. You know, like when I did this regression analysis um, in college on 
on players and I, I took combine times and I took um, or combine slash pro day times. And I took, you know, how they actually did in college from like a metric. Um, it found three cone to be very predictive of how successful you are in the NFL. So I bet, <laughs> I bet uh, agents basically told players, Hey, stop doing the three cone drill. If you have a sh shitty three cone time, you know, um, we also saw like a guy like DK Metcalf, like slip during his three cone causing him to fall. Um, so yeah, the, the drills are not perfect. Adonai Mitchell coming out of one, five, four, 10 yard split versus a one, uh, we're seeing as low as one, three, nine for Xavier in the 10 yard. I mean, I, I don't know which is which here because we're getting in one, a one, three, nine, 10 yard split, which is like insane. And then the other one is giving us a one, five. So I don't know, but I'm going to call these three guys winners of the combine. Some other names here, uh, like Roman Wilson is a name I've heard before. Ricky Pearsall is a name I've heard before. Let's jump in and see what uh, this PFF article says. Winners and losers by the numbers offense by Max Chadwick. I don't know anything about Max. I just clicked on an article I saw. He also is citing Kentley Platt. He's saying, Adonai Mitchell, who we looked at, uh, put up some good numbers. Xavier Worthy broke the combine. A loser is Jatavian Sanders, he's calling. Jatavian Sanders, by most people, is the tight end two in the class. Um, I think this is just in comparison because one of the tight ends was a freak and pull and posted like a 10 in the relative athletic score. So to be honest, I doubt this impacts him. I think the guy who was a freak was Theo Johnson. Theo Johnson Raz. Yeah, this, this guy posted a nine, nine, nine. Um, Four five seven forty one five five ten yard split at two hundred and sixty pounds six six uh, a seven point one five three cone. Those are impressive numbers by Mister Theo there. Now we also saw Kuntz. I want to say his last name was. Um, he also posted like a ten last year, and he was like a seventh round pick by the Jets and didn't see the field. So it could take a while. It could take a while. Bucky Irving is posted as a loser at the combine just didn't test that well you know this is very subjective stuff here and honestly this article is pretty useless it didn't have a lot of uh what combine winners and losers let's try running back i know jacob gave us some names and some of those guys posted some good numbers benson I want to say, okay, no, we're not paying for any websites here. All right, whatever. We don't really need those. The combine happened. Some guys posted some good times. We'll learn as it goes. It's going to change. Um, jumping in here. By the way, I didn't know if I'd be able to draft in Florida. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Maybe I can't. Um but I believe the the official fallout of underdog leaving Florida is that is only impacting pick'em products, which I don't care about. All right, we need uh, this bad boy is unfilled, so I need eleven brave soldiers or soldieritas out there to join me. Might have to get this one. Let me pull up my Discord here. Notify the people. You can join that Discord again in the YouTube description below. Six more for a big board. Artie Max. Woof. Kincaid, Kincaid, Kincaid. Bindles, our first YouTube member here. Only two more. Thanks, guys, helping me fill this up quick.
averaging about a stream a week until, um, you know, we're still kind of in the off season here. Ooh, pulled the 101. Pulled it with Jacob and we won CMC. I'm not doing that today. Yeah, I had talked about why I didn't understand why C.D. Lamb was the 103. He's now the 102. And honestly, he's in the mix for me for 101. I also think Jamar Chase is a very safe 101. CMC, Tyreek, Jefferson, um, all talented players in their own right, all have question marks to me, though. CMC, it's simply, he plays running back. He's getting older. Um, smash that like. Listen to best ball guy. Um, he's getting older. He's got a lot of touches. So that's part of the equation. Tyreek, getting older. That's pretty much it. Justin Jefferson. Latest rumors has Kirk Cousins going to... The Falcons. Um, so that's that's a major concern for Jefferson, depending on who the Vikings quarterback would be. I'm going to take CeeDee Lamb. I would say the only question mark on him is simply that they add a more talented tertiary piece than, than has been there. Um, so, yeah. But I don't think you can really go wrong. Jamar Chase, I don't really think there's any questions about Jamar Chase. I guess you could say Joe Burrow health. But yeah, I mean, I would want a access to all of these players um, at the top of the draft. And, you know, any player can get injured, of course. But today we're going to CD Lamb. Pretty who's who in here. Full of badge country. Looks like a lot of you guys are in the chat. What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, yeah, I'll probably start ramping up my streams. Doing a little bit more than weekly, but next week, definitely only doing one a week. Not going to be in town next week, so... Gonna be curious to see how the board has changed. Be nice to have Jacob on eventually too. These were, if you missed Jacob's and I stream talking about the rookies, this is what we were working with. Benson, Brooks, Bucky Irving. Yeah, so Jacob like Bucky. That article called him a loser. I'm pretty sure Blake Corum had a great combine. Um, Jalen Wright was fast. Had a good combine. JJ McCarthy had like an elite three cone time. I do not get the vibe that the back of the draft is weak. Like every year, people are usually like, oh, I didn't get to draft the 101. But it's like, look, you're still getting a Monraw there. You're getting starts with Nico, Gibbs, Kyron, Bijan, Garrett Wilson. They get a Monraw H hand start. Seems awesome. The nice thing about Lamb is currently his division is pretty terrible. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about that, too. Um, we're seeing a lot of moves in the NFL. I'd say latest rumors has Russell Wilson to the Steelers and Kirk Cousins to the Falcons. So... That leads to the question of where the hell is Justin Fields going to play? Um, and I don't know. There are some rumblings from people on Twitter that he's a bad pick because he doesn't have job security. But, I mean, I think any team that does trade for him will give him a chance. There's even rumblings that Trey Lance 
could get a shot that the Cowboys will try to trade him away. Um, seems feasible. The Bills, I mean, this is just standard. Like, do you actually know the NFL or do you just kind of like follow stand line? You know, I mean, and there's also a lot of people trolling on Twitter, but the Bills released a lot of big names recently. Okay. We're up here. Mike Evans re-signed with the Bucks. Let's do a double big boy start here. The Metcalf and Mike Evans. Just two grown-ass men. Wine, uh, rounding out our wide receiver start here. But yeah, the Bills released um, Mitch Morse. Starting center, who's old. Trey White, who unfortunately just has back-to-back -back years of first tearing his ACL, then hurting his Achilles. Was an all-pro cornerback at one time. Um, and then they released Jordan Poyer, safety, who's old and a liability now. And Micah Hyde's a free agent, unlikely to come back. So there are some people who are like, oh, this is like a rebuild for the Bills. I think that's nonsense. Um, I mean, I guess you could view it as a soft one. I just think it's them jettisoning some old expensive pieces. They, A, they needed some cap space. I think they made about $40 million in cap space. With these releases and some other releases, like Deontay Hardy was released. Um, Bates was traded away. So at the end of the day, they're moving McGovern to center. So they're moving their left guard to center. They clearly didn't want Bates to be center. They're going to have David Edwards compete for guard, uh, previously on the Rams. And then they re-signed Taylor Rapp who played well in safety. They signed him to like a borderline starting deal so really they only need one safety um their corners are still i would say a very good to elite unit where you got teron johnson who's like all pro caliber in the slot you got christian benford who was probably their best corner last year and then they traded for russell douglas who also played really well um now were the safeties a big part of the of the of the secondary being good with communication? Probably, but honestly, safety is a kind of an easier position to replace talent wise. And also, if you've been paying attention to cuts around the NFL, a bunch of safeties are getting released, and it kind of seems like the NFL franchises as a whole are kind of just like soft resetting. Um the safety position to, you know, like I think a lot of these safeties are going to have to sign like one year prove it deals is my vibe. And with this money, um, I mean, A, they just need to get under the cap, but Von Miller took a huge pay cut for the bills. Um, a, he needed to, he was like not good enough at all last year. And maybe he maybe he recovers, maybe he doesn't. And now he's, I think he's like cuttable easily next year. And then, you know, the Josh Allen, they'll just restructure him. They'll get $20 million in cap space. And so ultimately they don't really have many holes other than one safety position, which you can easily draft like a starting safety in the third round. And then, yeah, I still want them to upgrade wide out. I would say... It's possible they they are a, they make a move in free agency. Maybe they do sign Calvin Ridley. That would be fun. Calvin Ridley as kind of the Stefan Diggs replacement in some ways. If Diggs does start to slow down, if they're kind of complementary talents. I think Ridley's twenty nine. Yeah, Diggs is thirty. So I mean, he's not young by any means, but he is the top free agent 
I would assume. And the only reason, like, some people think Calvin really didn't play well or it was, like, a bad pick in fantasy. And, like, yeah, results-wise, he wasn't the best pick in fantasy. But that has a – he was pretty unlucky if you actually – hashtag no ball. He played well, you know. And in another universe, he comes down with, like, eight touchdown more than he came down with. So Ridley will um, be a top target. Now it's possibly guys like that take the bag from a team like the Patriots, a team like the Panthers, whatever. Um, hi. If you want to chat in here, by the way, guys, you got to subscribe. What do I make about the gap of Josh Allen and the QB2? I talked about this on my last stream, but... I think it will close eventually because Josh Allen, obviously electric one-on-one don't really see any reason why he shouldn't be the one-on-one, but should there be a two round gap between him and Hertz? Absolutely not. Okay. So we're up next here. Pacheco. I don't know. Pacheco's whatever. Scav, let's grab a Doomsier. The rookie. Take him here. And. I don't know. I could go a lot of different ways, but I'm going to grab Ken Walker for the Metcalf correlation. Running back wide out. Usually some decent correlation to have. And just an explosive player. But Checo's fine, but I don't know. He just seems kind of replaceable. Would have liked James Cook there. You know, Walk- Walker does have some risk attached to him just with Charbonnet being a second-year guy now. So Marvin Harrison Jr. goes 17, Malik Neighbors goes 31, and Adunzie goes 48, which, like, I don't know. I'm not debating that Marvin and Malik are studs, but it just doesn't really seem right that this huge of a gap exists. This is a rinse and repeat every year comment. (laughs) This wide receiver class really may be one of the best of all time. Now I just think better athletes are entering the NFL. Thoughts on DeAndre Hopkins at the 6-7 turn this year. Yeah, I want to see... Is he still a Titan for sure? Yeah, he is. No. Yes, he is. But it is uh, expensive. I don't know. He's fine. I almost find a guy like Calvin Ridley there, too. But figured I'd get at least one running back here. One running back who can put up, like, 18 points per game, you know? The quarterback options are appealing too. Addison I like, but uh, ran unquestionably hot with touchdowns. Obviously, if I want to, I can go Dak. I have cheap stacks open with Geno and Baker. Christian Kirk is good value. Prob- probably going to be the wideout one there again. I just don't know. I don't know why the Jags agreed it, agreed to the it costs us a second round pick if we re-sign Calvin Ridley trade because it guarantees you're never re-signing him unless he's like 
unless he plays as like a top, you know, three to five wide out in the whole NFL. Yeah, so a lot of dominoes still to fall in the NFL. Can't wait for the draft. The sixth round is usually when the running backs of yesteryear start getting taken. Don Kincaid, great pick. Come on, guys. We got a bunch of badge people in here. You don't got to take 30 seconds per pick here. Half of you are watching this stream. Grip and rip. Let's make this the fastest fast draft of all time. See, like the the fun thing with a guy like Adunzie is, since he likely will be the cheapest between those two wideouts is, I mean, it's not, it's not possible a team like Buffalo, a team like Kansas city trades up to grab them. Not to mention there's probably some better teams with better quarterbacks that will just take them naturally. Yeah. I mean, if these prices hold like Hertz 41, Lamar 47, Mahomes 52, then Josh, just has to fall into like the 30s. You're good, Brock. I'm not singling you out. Where do I think Josh Jacob lands? I really don't know, man, with these these running backs. You know, like some of them will be kind of like souped up Latavius Murray's like RB twos and committees. Anytime you can go naked Dak Prescott, you got to do it. Um, okay. I'm going to go Burrow and Brock Bowers and hope that the Bengals take Brock Bowers. I kind of like that someone sniped Dak on me. Instant snipe, too, by the way. Because um, it doesn't like force me to go quarterback there. And I didn't feel forced to grab Burrow either, but... You know, you got the dust ball running backs. Not all these. Some of these guys are going to smash, by the way. Spears is interesting. Oh, <laughs> Eric says he accidentally took naked Dak. Happens, man. Happens. I was going to say, it doesn't make a lot of sense for your team, but. No, it's not naked, brother. It's with Brock Bowers. It's the stack. Let me guess. Are you the Jamar Chase drafter? Tough. Bowers is in the mix there. Let's see. Bengals draft pick. Forty nine days. What pick do they have? First round draft picks. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the Bengals are eighteen. I don't know. A guy like Bowers has a wide range. 
you know, like I've some people think he's mixed at five. I'm gonna guess him being a tight end around 10, 11, 12 starts becoming a discussion. And I could see him sliding. And I could also see a team trading up and wanting him. I would also think that Adunzie every once in a while would fall to the Bengals. Oh, please, brother. I, I brought I'm the first one to probably bring up Charlie Jones. Don't gotta tell me. Herbert, great value. Jordan Love, probably good value. I'm more into a guy like Tony Pollard than Najee. Probably more than Alvin Kamara. I don't know. Alvin Kamara's tough. Had a good year last year, but now another year older. Like the what the Bills did is like the opposite of what the Saints have done. The Bills were like, okay, we have some aging players who are not that good anymore. Get rid of them. The Saints have done this weird thing where they're like, no, we need to hold on to all these old dudes and make our cap situation very weird. Yeah, I mean, like some of these <laughs> some of these running backs are gonna smash, like, and some of them you're gonna be like, mm-hmm, and that's why he was a seventh and eighth round pick. Feel good about my wideout core here. So gonna go volume at running back. Bowers is probably part of a three tight end room. Doesn't feel quite right to take him ahead of guys like Kittle, Ingram, Pitts, Njoku, especially if Kirk Cousins is a Falcon, like Pitts could smash. But whatever. It was for the stack. You think Bowers goes 15? John to Miami? I don't know. He's got some pick connections. Kyler Murray feels like a great pick. I I think just if if Justin Fields plays most of the year, I think he's a smash. All right, we're gonna take Chase Brown. We need some running backs, anyways. This is the end of some wideouts we like. Take a Chase Brown, get in that stack. Joe Mixon having a higher ADP than Chase Brown. Why? And then let's take let's take Hollywood. I think Deontay's interesting, but Hollywood could be a chief, could be a bill. I'm scrolling for my sake, not, not for the viewer's sake. I have heard people say before, like, slow down your scrolls. Yeah, Justin Fields as a QB2 also is interesting. Oh, that, that you were announcing Janu is signed with Miami. Man, Miami, I don't think people realized how all in Miami was last year. Um, like, they're not able to re sign. Oh, yeah. Trubisky, backup. I don't know why this has been announced for a while. 
Two year deal up to 10 mil. Yeah, I mean, probably a fine signing for them, not not moving the needle, but yeah, I don't think people realized how all in the Dolphins were. They're not able to re-sign Christian Wilkins, who is like a very good interior D lineman for them. So I like my start. We got some for sure correlation. We got some maybe correlation. We got maybe the starting running back of the Bengals. We got the Metcalf Walker correlation. We got maybe the tight end of the Bengals. Five wideouts we feel good about. Will allow me to go a little bit lighter at wideout. You think Janu moves the needle. I mean, Janu is worth a quarter of a win in the NFL <laughs> over the over 17 games. I think he's yeah, he's like a fine yak tight end. And if Tyreek and Waddle are pulling coverages, a yak tight end can he, they can have some good games. Draft Janu in this one? No, it's okay. I'll let the Tua drafter have him. I'd be, I you know, if you're a Dolphins fan, do you want the Dolphins to pay Tua? That just seems like you're accepting, I don't know, a little bit better than like Jared Goff, maybe a little bit worse. And I guess, I mean, the Lions were close to winning a Super Bowl, but it took an elite O-line, or getting to one at least. They needed an elite O-line. It's really what did it, right? <laughs> do you like Shakir? I do like Shakir, but um, the possibility is there that really like Kincaid target dominates, Diggs target comp target target dominates, and a draft pick target dominates, and they really want Shakir to be like the wide receiver three. Who is the Vikings tight end with Hawk out? Yeah, I mean one of those guys. Could be worse. You could be the Giants. I don't know, man. With the Giants, it's like, you know, or you're pretty sure that Daniel Jones ain't it. Whether it's injuries, whether it's whatever, who cares? But you're you're picking near the top of the draft. They could take a they could take a rookie this year. Yeah, Darren Waller seems like he's like really considering retirement. Makes him a tough click. We're seeing the rookies come off. Trey Benson. Jonathan Brooks. Ty Chandler. Not a rookie, but seems solid. All right, well, I don't have any stacks with him. But I'm going to take Trevor anyways. I just, I'm just i just holding the line there. And also, Jaden Daniels is getting talked like he is um, Lamar-type rushing. So, whatever. We're going triple quarterback. We're going triple tight end. Probably not going to be stacked up that much. Could have gone some running backs here. Could have gone some wideouts here. Could have gone some tight ends here, but we're not. We're being... I really like the spike week ability of these 
three quarterbacks. They should each put up 30 points in certain games, if not more. And yeah, there are some cheap stacking options available there. Yeah, I mean, trying to grind who the Vikings tight end right now is, is like, you probably just don't need to grind that. We're zooming in for the second half of the draft. Yeah, I probably would have taken a guy like Trey Benson. I don't see why Caleb Williams should be drafted ahead of Jaden Jaden Daniels with his rushing upside. So we got three, two, five, one. And I'm I'm probably gonna go thin at wide out and just depend on the quality and hope that none of them get hurt. And I kind of need to do that by going three QB, three tight end. What happened with Hawkinson? He, he got hurt, bro. Significantly. When is he expected to come back? I have no idea. Probably like mid to late in the season. And who knows even to what level. Dalton Schultz re-signed with the Texans. Seems like a much better bet than TJ Hawkinson. One bet. Pick later. Pieces in the Bears offense are like interesting. Just autoed your last three picks. Well, you got Purdy, Sutton, and Hawkinson. And some of those could pay off. Yeah, I mean, like... Matthew Stafford being within a round of Lawrence and Jaden Daniels just doesn't make any sense, right? Like, I like Stafford. He's a good real-life quarterback, and he's stacked with Cooper Cup, but he has almost no fantasy upside. You know, he's, like, regularly in the 20-point range. He very rarely will give you a rushing touchdown. Lad feels like a solid pick. Yeah, I'm definitely going thin at running back because just by nature, a lot of people go on wide receiver up top. They kind of draft a lot of running backs here, which makes sense. But what I'm doing is unquestionably probably more unique and rare, where if it does work, just not a lot of people will build this way. Because this is kind of like a chalk good way to build. <laughs> your, your Stafford pick got cooked. I didn't mean, I'm not cooking it. He's a fine pick. It's just, you know, this. it's weird him being so close to these other guys. Oh, Gabe Davis staring at our heart there. Okay, let's see. What pick are we at here? 144. Let's take Jalen Wright. He's fast as hell. Really the only thing I know about him. And... I'm going to go Michael Mayer. I'm also tempted to go Fryermuth. I'm also tempted to go Khalil Herbert, but we're not. We're going Michael Mayer. I mean, this is a second year player. Give him a give him a photo, underdog. Come on now. Chase Brown got a photo. Yeah, I'm gonna be taking running backs. I don't even know what they look like.
Gabe Davis, huge Gabe Davis guy, but got to see where he signs. Yeah, I've still not done all – I've not really dived into the big board as much. I'll start ramping up there, really trying to get my rookie takes down. But, you know, those really start for me once the actual draft happens. No love for Mayor? I have love for Mayor. I, I drafted him. Probably the starting tight end on the uh, – on the Raiders, second year player. You're definitely fading cup, you think he's done? That's not my take, but I do need to think about it more. And I want to see where his price settles. You know, like cases like Michael Thomas, you can't just like copy that and, oh, fair, Carlos. But like cases like Michael Thomas, like you can't just point to that and be like, look, it was smart to fade Michael Thomas because of injury. You know, it's like, it's so unique year to year. Or it's uh, what I meant to say is it, it's so, it's, it's, it's an individual thing. Some players' injuries are serious and it's, are difficult to come back from and some pe- some bodies don't recover well, and other people do, you know. And it's like just because Cup got injured two years in a row doesn't mean a ton. He could just have gotten unlucky. Let's see what else Schefter is saying here. If you didn't see this, um. <laughs> God, Vladimir Kamnik is responding to me. <laughs> okay, so Vladimir Kramnik is a previous world chess champion. And, um, you know, he's kind of an older player now. He's retired from top level chest and he's making the rounds for um he's making he's making the rounds on the internet because he's accused he accuses everyone of cheating nowadays so he's like kind he's he's gone a little insane right so whatever he'll like go to he'll just like go to twitter and he'll just like post stats and he doesn't have he doesn't seem to understand these stats at all and i used to work for chess.com so like I am familiar with their anti-cheating system and whatever. Anyways, I'm not trying to make this huge discussion on cheating, but some guy seems to have been threatening Kramnik by the name of Liam Knutson. This is chess.com profile. So if you believe Kramnik, which I don't think he's making this up, he says, the sick gentleman threatening me in most perverse way is a proud award member of the Nakamura Club, it appears. Hikaru Nakamura. Another top chess player who's a streamer. He says, maybe someone will start reflecting. Well, anyways, he posts this image and like by Googling the name Liam Knutson, my name comes up at Chess Liam. And so (laughs) someone tagged me in this and was like, hey, shout out, which I found funny. And I retweeted it and was like, you know, this is not how I thought I'd get shouted out. I'm not a titled player to be clear um, yet. I, you know, I, I think I'll try to be. And so I can't even play titled Tuesday where he accuses most of these people of cheating. Um, and then I guess some people actually think I am the person who he's bringing up. So I don't know. Maybe I should sh- sue Kramnik for uh, slander. Joking. 
All right. I like Zach Moss. I feel like he has a good chance of landing somewhere solid. How many picks do we got left? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to take Moss. We could be crazy and take a fourth quarterback to go with our Seattle stack, but we're not going to do that. Um, How'd this guy do at the Combine? Probably pretty bad if he's still here. Oh, whatever. We're going to take a steam A. Someone said something about a steam A. What did D say? A steam A stock down a bit too. Well, whatever. We let's let's look it up. Audric Estime Combine. Or Audric Estime Raz. Seems like he was slow. Good explosion, slow. Solid weight though, 221. I mean Honestly, let's just let's look this up though, because the audience needs to see this. This is our guy Kyron Williams Raz. I don't know if he was hurt, whatever, but he got three five two overall. Terrible explosion. Good three cone. Actually, a decent ten yard split, which again is the one we care about. Um. Not great 40, not great 20 yard split, not good height or weight. So we got we got those. And then this. Who he's even slower, but he's heavier. So yeah, I don't know. Combine isn't everything for every position. This guy saying, Audric Estime is a Jeremy Hill. Hill ran a 466 at 233. Yeah, so it just seems like he's a big boy, but not a fast guy. And big boys have spots in the NFL. Yeah, both are Notre Dame backs. Just saying. People forget I was one of the huge Kyron Williams drafters. Moss feels like a solid, a solid person in a zero running back rotation, just like very likely to secure at least an RB2 job. No, actually, you didn't. And also, I had like 25% Chiron, I think. And also, it has to do with when you drafted, right? So, like, I didn't draft that many teams late August, but every single team I did, I had Kyron on it. So, like, someone who just, I don't know, watched the stream was like, oh, I like Liam's taking Kyron and then drafted all their teams at the end. Not as impressive. But you'd have a higher percentage. Okay. I mean, Gino is just staring us there. They, they're daring us to do four QB. Man, these are whatever. I am doing four QB. It's 20 rounds. Who cares? 
We do need a third tight end too. We'll figure out later. And man, how'd Will Shipley do? Will Shipley Raz. Yikes. Will Shipley Combine. Yeah, I don't really have all my running back takes down yet. Oh. I mean, okay. Do you not run at the combine? We don't seem to be getting. We got a quote. That's like, that's good enough, right? I am the number one all-purpose all back in this class. Hell, amen, brother. Welcome to the team. Would I do 4QB a lot? No, but it is 20 rounds after ADP. It's double stacked. I'm going light at wide receiver anyways, and I honestly, I could stop at two tight end if I felt like it, but... Probably do a tight end and then maybe running back wide out. So something like a four, seven, six, three. I could also go, I could stop at five wide receivers if I felt like it. Pass catching. Hey, we'll take it. All right, good company here. Didn't test. We buying into Bryce saved by Canales part three, and we worried about Baker without Canales. Um, the Bryce thing, I really need to see what, what kind of weapons they add. Like if they add significant weapons in the passing game, sure. I think anyone can succeed with with significant weapons, right? Like I don't, I don't feel them succeeded. So if you if you like place Calvin Ridley, a top draft pick, another guy, and then yeah, I don't think Baker is gonna like fall apart or anything. I don't think he's, you know, like a stud in fantasy, but should be able to support Mike Evans still. Probably be pretty similar. But you know, guys like the Geno Smiths, the Baker Mayfields, these kind of quarterbacks of the world. They need to get a little lucky to have a good fantasy season. I'm only going to read the first part. People compare Shipley to CMC. Boom. Man, Tyler Boyd. I think Zay Jones, if he had made it to me, would have been a fine wide receiver to add with the Trevor stack. But the nice thing about Trevor is he spreads it around. There are enough pass pass the uh, op pass game weapons in the for him to like spread it around with. And then also he rushes in the touchdowns. Dude's like a tall giraffe, so he just reaches over, you know. J.J. McCarthy, solid value if he's starting. Daniel Jones, solid value if he's starting. Russell Wilson, probably fine if he's starting. I full faded Russ last year. I was only nervous for like one week. Oh, you know. Abana Kanda, solid pick.
Like Zach Moss could be like a cowboy, you know? They could just like sign him to be a one two punch. I don't, uh, you know, I could see them restructuring, but I don't think they want to lose both. But they might. I am going to take Charlie Jones now. There's no guarantee, but inside track to be slot wide out. And you know, I could go Fant to add to this Geno stack. I kind of like Dulcich. Whatever. Fant, Fant won me BBM2. So we'll do Fant. And then we're going to round this bad boy out with a running back and call it a day. Jonathan Mingo, I can't do that. I do think Darnell Mooney is a solid pick. Yeah, Demarcus Robinson, I've been in on him. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there is a chance the Cowboys give Deuce a chance, but, like, you know, he's never going to be. He's so small, bro. Yeah, I, I don't want Fant to be a Seahawk, probably. Just no need to have that. <laughs> They'll give Deuce a chance to make the roster. Just taking a pure dart at running back here. A 4-6, six, 6-3. Six, Tight end room. You know, not the strongest. Wide receiver room, top heavy but feel good about it. Quarterback room, feel great about it. Running back room, could go either way. You know, if Walker and Chase are studs, that that buys a lot of breathing room. If I'm actually getting usable weeks from guys like Wright, Moss, Estime, Shipley, boom. I think I know who I'm going to take as my running back this time, but just want to want to let these names wash over me. Ertz signed in Washington. Yeah, man, he's fine. They 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 cut Logan Thomas. And then signed Zach Ertz. So, assuming they take Drake May, I don't know, he could get peppered in targets. Oh, hurt my back a little bit at the gym yesterday. I gotta fix my form. Yeah, Michael Thomas cut. It's the time of year for that. I really don't know what specific exercise I did to hurt it, but it was probably 
the deadlift or something. I wasn't doing perfect. Kyle Phillips. Yeah, I mean, wide receiver you can feel good about in these late rounds. Kendrick Bourne possibly could be signed by Buffalo. Was going to resign with uh, New England. See, foosball here, that's a man of the people. It's round 20. He instant clicked A.T. Perry. He didn't leave. He didn't just throw a name in the queue. Shout out foosball. He waited and made that pick. Man, Alec Pierce, I can't. I don't know if I can do it. Ty Johnson, solid pick potentially. Today, the running back, I'm going to spin the wheel on. Zeke is probably fine. Madison's probably fine, but today I'm going to take Evan Hull. You know, could do could do Chase Brown type things if uh, he's given a shot. Probably has the inside job at the RB2 in Indy. You know, he was hurt last year. Athletic freak. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today's draft. If you'd be so kind, please like the video, subscribe if you have not. Again, if you want to join the Discord, the link to do so is in the YouTube description below. And if you are a YouTube member, you can get access to the special Discord only for members. Peace out. Enjoy your week.